A few weeks ago, I decided to take the A plus 1201 and the 1202 exam on the same day to pass those exams. In this video, I'm going to tell you guys everything you need to know to pass that exam because I'm actually, I actually did a brain dump of the test and all the topics that's on the exam. And I'm going to go over that with you because as I finished both of the exam, the 1201 and I finished the 1202, I took some notes on it. We're going to go over that in this video. Let's get started. I'm Andrew Ramdia. I am one of the A-plus instructors here at TIA. I make all the e-learning courses. A lot of you guys know me from the Udemy platform for doing a lot of hands-on training. Let's get into this. So the first thing up I want to talk about is the exam. So if you guys notice, on October 12th, uh, I took both exams. This is the 1201. So we got the 1201. Uh, and the 1202. No, I took them really just back to back. Like the moment I finished one, I took the other one. I just wanted to get it over with so I make sure I know what I'm talking about as I go through making the course. So every three years, CompTIA releases a new A plus exam. And as the instructor for it, I got to make sure that I take these exams before I make a course. There are people out there that are making courses that never took the test, which seems kind of odd. Anyhow, Let's get into what you guys are here for the brain dump. If you want to pass your exam, you want to pass your core one, you want to pass your core two, these are things that you're going to need to know. These are actual exam topics that I saw on my exam. Now, unfortunately, my handwriting isn't the best out there, uh, as you guys can see. So what I did is I took a picture of my notes, and we're going to bring that picture up right now. Let's take a look here at the picture that we have. So this here, I got right out of taking the exam. We're going to go through this. Now, I want to point out something to you guys. What's on this exam is really the exact thing you're going to find in the exam content outline, in the exam objectives you're going to find. So nothing new here from the exam objectives. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to tell you things you need to know, things that I saw on the test. What were the performance-based questions that I got? What were the multiple choice topics, as much as I can remember? I don't have a lot. I may have 10 or 15. I got. I think I got all the PBQs correctly, but I can't remember them in depth. So if you're thinking I'm going to give you the exam question, that's not what this video is, because I can't remember them. It's been, I wrote this down after the exam, and if I was to give you the exam question, Come to you will probably crucify me, so I'm not going to do that. What we will talk about, though, is topics and how you should be studying if you want to pass your A-plus exam. So with that in mind, let's go ahead and get started on this. So let's talk about this. We're going to do 1201, then we're going to do another one, then we're going to take a look at the next one for 1202. So the first thing up I want to mention is the PBQs. The performance-based questions. Now, the performance-based questions, to me, were actually very easy. Uh, you just had to understand a couple of things. Like, number one, you needed to understand RAID. You need to know there was something with a RAID being bad, and you needed to know, okay, I need to replace or fix this disk of some kind. I believe it's a RAID 5, but I saw RAID appeared not just in the performance-based question, but there was also a multiple choice question uh, on rate. All right, so there was a multiple choice question and a performance-based question on it. Forever, since I started taking A plus back in 2001, th there has been printer questions. You need to understand, well, this printer is broken. This laser printer is broken. It's having ghost images on the paper. What do you need to fix? What needs to be replaced? Something like that was a performance-based question. What connects to a UPS? So when you're connecting devices, you're going to have to connect some of it to a surge protector and some of it to the uh, UPS itself. What should be battery protected? What should not be? Another performance-based question. What can cause a PC to boot? So they give you like this, they give you an image of a computer failing to boot. You have to read the error message and say, hey, you know what? That's, that's what needs to be fixed. And different issues. They give you like a whole bunch of problems. Like a projector was bad and it's like the keystone issue. Um, this laptop is not booting. This phone has a problem. And then you need to select an option. Hey, that's the way you would fix that particular problem. These are not difficult, not difficult at all. 
if you do my course, you go through the hands-on training, you do the labs that I have, I have a whole bunch of labs in my course, you're gonna find those, in my opinion, to be pretty easy. Now, the multiple choice questions. This here was pretty quick. By the way, it took me about 40 minutes to finish the whole test. Now, multiple choice questions, things you need to know. You need to know different types of DNS records. What's an A record versus a quad A record versus a TXT record? Well, a TXT can be used for things like email, securing your email servers. A quad A record, that's used to do domain names to IPv6. And an A record is gonna be used to do IP domain names to IPv4. You need to know DNS records. You need to know RAM, when is optimized RAM, like ECC RAM versus when you should use dual, dual channel RAM or, or triple channel RAM. Troubleshooting steps. Quite a lot of these, like something is going wrong. What should the technician do next? Uh, RAID, know your RAIDs one, your RAID zero, one, and five. Those are gonna be the most popular RAID. Oddly enough, I still can't believe that the current A plus exam has dot matrix printers on it. Understand the print heads on dot matrix printer and they still work with ribbons. Uh, network and devices. No, what's the difference between a switch versus a managed switch versus something like a router? Uh, no protocols, not a lot of questions, but no SMTP, IMAP, POP3, FTP, no different protocols that are out there and what they're doing. You don't have to know how to configure them, but you just have to understand them. Um, hypervisors and virtualization. You better know the difference between a hypervisor one, a hypervisor type one and a type two. Now in the course, remember we covered that in depth. I do a lot of labs on that for you guys. Screens. So this here is like, you're gonna be building a machine. Uh, you gotta know when to use solid state drives versus a normal hard drive. Like a normal hard drive is really slow versus a solid state drives. Um, cloud computing, know the characteristics, know things like elasticity. That's, that's the characteristics of cloud computing. All right, when you're building a gaming PC, what can slow it down? Well, use an SSD on the gaming PC. Um, port to use for a gaming PC. Things you should understand the different types when you're building a gaming PC, use an SSD, use a graph, you know what type of graphics card should be using a gaming PC versus not. Uh, wireless networking, know what's the know what's the pros and cons of 2.4 versus five gigahertz and IP addressing. For example, if they give you an IP address, you gotta say, well, if I select this and communicate with that. So they're gonna say the router's IP is this, what IP should you assign to a device? Understand your different classes, ABC, understand your APIPA address was also a question on there. All right, that is what the 1201, some of the questions that I saw, was this, was this hard? No, it does require some memorization on your part and understanding the technology, but overall, I think it was a pretty easy exam. All right. Moving on here to number, uh, test number two that I took. Now this one I actually forgot a lot of because I've been doing exams for like three, four hours at this point and I got pretty tired, but I did hit those PBQs though. So let's take a look here. Um, oops, I lost my pen there. All right, so let's take a look at some of the things here that we need to understand. Number one, uh, the, the first PBQ, if I remember right, it's gonna be on this, there's something with services, computer, some services are not working and you have to understand, hey, that service needs to be turned on or disabled or enabled would be the first one. Um, the other one is a ticket. They're gonna show you a bunch of problems. Like user submits different ticket in there. They can't connect to the server or their computer is not functioning well. How should you solve that? That's pretty easy. There was a really easy one about classifying email. I can't remember too much about it, but it was like, you receive an email and it, you have to read the email and say, well, that's spam. They're selling something versus that is not spam. That's a virus. You should delete that. Uh, you have to classify the emails on that one. Know how to open a port. I do go over this. In one of the labs in the course, I show you guys how to open a port on a router. So in the course, we configure routers and I show you guys how to set up routers and open port 3389. That was an actual, that's an actual whole uh, PBQ by itself. So if you do that lab in the course, you're gonna be all right. Now, I did 
put this in here. I remember taking this test. And I'm like, if these guys don't know their acronyms, they're not going to do well. So acronym galore on this exam. Know things like, hey, what is an MDM? An MDM is used to control mobile devices. It's what organizations are going to use to lock up and track mobile devices. Privilege access management. This is how we manage privilege accounts, privilege account management. This is going to be when you have administrators, you have a lot of people, different administrators uh, access, you need to manage that correctly. Those accounts should not be given out to anyone. Uh, so PAM, MDM, hardware requirements for Windows 11, like TPM. All right, when installing Windows 11, you must have a TPM 2.0 on that motherboard or at least add it onto the motherboard. If not, you can install it. Understand multi-factor authentication. When to use something like an authenticator app. All right, something happened with a computer. Is it spyware, is it Trojan, or is it ransomware? Know the different characteristics between these kinds of viruses. No different terminology, like something like an NDA or EULA or a, a policy of how you manage user, acceptable use policies within an organization. Uh, static electricity is still on your exam. If you guys know in the core one, we, we set up the static mat and I showed you guys static bags and uh, using anti-static wrist straps. Find that out in the course. Uh, Linux and Windows command. You should know different Linux and like net use to manage network shares. Know how to know like what command in Linux should do certain things. You don't have to execute them. In the course, we go through a lot of Linux command and I really go in depth into them, but I show you guys how to actually use them. So you're just not memorizing them, but practice that lab, practice all my um, labs in the course when it comes to commands, I think you're gonna be just fine. And of course, know what a VPN is, know when we should be using VPNs. All right, this is what I got. That's what I can remember when taking this exam. Now, if you, if you look at it, it's not really much different than what's in exam objectives. That's why when I make the courses, I make them to the exam objectives because everything that's in that A plus exam is in that exam objective. So if you know it really well, you'll be able to pass your exam. Now, if you want to take my A plus class, I think you're going to enjoy it. Here's what we did for my core one. I had a little bit of a problem. I needed a gaming PC for my house. So what I did in the core one was I said, you know what? I'm just going to build a whole gaming PC with my students. So what I did with you guys is I built an entire gaming PC. Here, the editor put some clips of me building it. This is the box of the motherboard that we use. And I put together a gaming PC. I show you guys how to build it. And then in the core two, I would show you guys how to install operating system and troubleshoot some things on it. So that was a lot of fun to do. The entire courses are really hands-on. You're going to learn a ton. It comes with a bunch of practice questions also. I also have a bunch of practice questions on it. The courses are on the Udemy platform. They're on the TIA exams platform. You guys can check them out. If you guys want to pass your exam, check those courses out. Hopefully you guys found this very informative. Now you know some different things you should know for your A-plus exam. By the way, if you did find this informative, give the video a like, subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you in the next video.